Hey, it's Joey, Turning Point Boatworks. As promised, uh, we're gonna get into the Thursday topics again. Um, I have some things that I, I need to kind of uh, express and, and my opinions, uh, I need to get them out there because I think they're important within the paddling community. Uh, Cause there's things that I see or have seen and you know, keep in mind that these opinions are based off of my experience, what I've seen, what I've experienced. Uh, you know, in the teaching and also just out in the general, you know, paddling public. Um, so we're going to kind of concentrate on what I've seen in the teaching realm today that I have a problem with. And uh, I want everybody here that's listening to this video, keep an open mind. Um, don't get so stuck in dogmatic kind of views that we get into some sort of argument about this, but I want it to start a conversation because I want it to elevate the sport and also elevate teachers. Uh, by pointing out some things that I see from a repair and from an engineering standpoint that I have a, a pretty, pretty strong opinion about. So that being said, let's dive right into it. Um, the first uh, one is paddle float re-entry by tucking the paddle under the, the rigging. The second one is I see this in pictures all the time. It's Facebook fodder. I don't see where it does anything to further the skills of the individual paddlers that this is when this is going on and that's having someone support the kayak while somebody stands up in it that one i'm kind of stuck in the mud about so i want somebody to convince me otherwise and say okay yeah this is a good idea so please convince me on that so anyway let's get into the first one. First one is going to be about the paddle float re-entry uh, there has been a lot of talk about this recently social media and that's where i get a lot of my inspiration for topics um, so if you have a topic you want to hear me talk about, uh, and if I have experience in it and I have an opinion on it, I will certainly, you know, do that. So leave that in the comments below. Um, paddle float reentry uh, by tucking the paddle under the rigging. Um, there's certain forces that are going on there, and if it's done perfectly, yes, it's viable. But my contention is, is that when we're teaching people how to do this, this reentry, this, this self-rescue, that they're not going to do it perfect and if they have a carbon fiber paddle they have a lightweight boat they have a lot of things they're putting all of that stuff at risk and risk of damage to it and it's not going to show up until they need it that's my problem with this whole thing so uh, how many instructors out there have seen someone doing a paddle float re-entry and then the paddle breaks um, it comes up a lot in topics and you know, when we spend, you know, an enormous amount of money on a paddle, you know, I mean, I think this one right now is retailing right, right north of 500 bucks. You don't want to break it. Um, and you especially don't want to break it while you're out on a paddle. Um, and what I'm going to say is, is that this is my experience with carbon fiber is carbon fiber rarely breaks at the time it's under the maximum stress. It usually breaks when it's under very low stress just due to micro fractures in the carbon laminate and then it gets cycled over and over during the paddle process and then eventually it gives it gives away at the and it's usually not under any pressure at all um, so that's what happens with this and when we're tucking these paddles underneath the rigging we're running a huge risk at causing those micro fractures in the paddle sh in the shaft and also in the blade so this is what I see a lot of people do is they'll, they'll tuck it and the root of the blade is underneath the deck rigging. So you can imagine there's very little stress on this end. The stress gets stronger, 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 heavier, heavier, heavier as we get out towards the point of contact where the highest stress is going to be on that paddle blade. What's going to happen here? If it breaks immediately, it's going to break at this point. Um, so what happens if we shove the paddle a little farther in? Say we get it, this point is on the shaft. It's a lot better in this position, but how many beginners that are learning this know to do that or can you teach that? And my contention is, is we're already overloading them with information to start putting stipulations on how the paddle is placed on here. Just is one thing, probably too many, uh, too much for, for a lot of people. So my I've never taught to do this, so my technique for teaching someone how to re-enter is to grab it with their thumb, hold it in place, 
and then do the paddle float reentry. Um, and this can be done. And this is, I know that we're, we're dealing with a lot of different people, a lot of different body types and a lot of, a lot of strength things. Um, so, you know, starting out with this style of uh, instruction will reveal if they can do it or not. Um, I think if we're going to include this action, this needs to be a last resort. Um, you know, if, if they're using a stirrup or something like that, it's going to run the paddle blade all the way through. It's going to put it at a pretty strong point. The only stress point that's really going to be concerned with a stirrup is going to be the ferrule itself, um, which is a problem for some paddles uh, because their, their ferrule systems are a little bit weak. So, but anyway, that is my opinion on the paddle float reentry. Uh, next is, is standing up in the kayaks. Um, I see no point in it, absolutely no point. This is not a team building thing that we're doing. We are actually, um, we're trying to work on individual skills. I think that stability can be illustrated in other ways, way, whether it's through a paddle or a heel hook uh, reentry, something like that. Uh, standing up in the, in the boat is a risky maneuver because you don't know what that person's balance is standing up in it. You're asking them to do this something that's unnatural to the, to the person that's standing up and falls are frequent. It happen all the time. So, and this is coming from my, my repair business side of me, um, that, but the boat damage is extremely high in occurrence when you fall on a deck. Uh, in particular, you have a bulkhead here. I see cracks. This one's got a, got a crack right across here um, where it's, you know, taking some stress. Uh, I've seen cracks that emanate underneath the day hatch here and extend out onto the back deck. How did it happen? A fall onto the deck. So I don't see a point in that. I see that there's other methods for doing and, and illustrating how you create stability during a rescue and assisted rescue. Uh, other than standing up in the kayak. Um, so anyway, like I said in the beginning, these are my opinions. I'm not stuck in stone. Uh, I'm, you know, um, I'm keeping an open mind. I want you to do the same. If you have a comment or uh, anything like that, please feel free to leave it below and uh, stay tuned for next week. We've got some more topics to cover. Thanks.